Welcome back, uh, Professor Joyce, Economics 1001, and this is our recitation, recitation for Chapter 5, which is on elasticity. And as has been the pattern in these recitations, what we're going to do is we're going to take a 10-question quiz. These are questions that are likely to be in some form on the exam, and so I think practicing them and kind of deconstructing them is a way for you to understand the major concepts being asked by these questions and to work through the various kind of multiple choices which often can trip students up. So, as is our plan, you always take or hopefully you've printed out or have available to you the questions from each chapter, and this is chapter five's recitation, so hopefully you have the 10 question quiz from chapter five. And we can start right in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna present the question. I will stop, I will give you some time to kind of work on that question. Uh, and then I'll go and walk through the answer and the various choices, and we'll see where we're at. All right, so let's start with number one. It's, again, chapter five, and if you look at number one, it says, in which of the following situations will total revenue increase? So which in the following situations will total revenue increase? Take a minute, all right? Look at your four choices. When you're ready, come back to the video, and we'll go through the answer. All right, go to it. All right, so let's take a look at it. Uh, you've given four choices, and you see there's an answer D, which is all the above. So you have to test each one of the choices to make sure that not just one of them, but maybe all three of them will hold under this particular situation. So it says, and let me start out with a little bit of a, a primer on this, right? The question we're struggling with in this chapter, really, and then this is the end of the chapter, but it's really the most important part of it, is what's the effect of elasticity on the total revenue for a firm? And the reason a firm has to know this is because if the firm goes and cuts price, when in fact its elasticity is less than one, it's inelastic, then what the firm does is, has done is just hurt itself. It just decreased its revenues. So this concept can't be, over, can't be underestimated, right? Think of the Metropolitan Transit Authority with the subway system, for example, right? Every time they consider a fair hike, they have to be aware of their elasticity in order to be able to predict what's going to happen to revenues, fare they're going to collect from citizens, because we know when they raise the fare on the subway, there are going to be fewer riders. So back to the question here. It says, in which of the following situations will total revenue rise? And the first answer says, the price elasticity of demand is 1.2, and the price of the good decreases. So let's write this down. Elasticity of demand is equal to 1.2, and let's make sure you understand that that's an absolute value, right? So it's the absolute value of this elasticity is 1.2, and then they tell us that the price of the good decreases. And then we'll have price decreases, all right? So now we have to ask ourselves, well, what happened to total revenue? Again, start as we've talked about in class, you know that total revenue is equal to price times quantity. And in this particular case, we're lowering price. We, we know the quantity demand is going to increase. The more important question is, is the increase in quantity demand going to be greater, relatively speaking, than the decrease in price? And that's the struggle for us. We have to kind of figure that out. So let's take the situation right here. And we know that elasticity of demand, I'm going to write this out because we do this all the time, is equal to the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. All right, so that's one of the first things you should do when you confront one of these questions. Write down the information that you know. Write down this basic ratio right here because this is going to help you solve the problem. And we know in this particular case, this one, it's equal to 1.2. So stop right now and let's interpret this 1.2. This 1.2 says, for every 1%, for example, in this case, decrease in price, quantity demand is going to increase by 1.2%. In other words, the relative change in quantity demand is going to be greater than the relative change in price. Now, back to the problem. What this firm done, has done is it's decreased price by some amount. Call it 10%, just to keep this example going. Well, if it decreases price by 10%, and the ratio of the elasticity is 1.2%, then we know the quantity demand is going to increase by 12%. In other words, the increase in quantity demand is going to more than offset the decrease in price, and therefore revenue is going to increase. It's going to be greater than zero. All right. So the first one comes out with, that's correct. A is right. So let's go to the next one. All right. Again, because just this question involves a, an all the above, you have to walk through every single one of these. 
it says the price elasticity of demand is 0.5 and the price of the good increases. All right. So now we've got elasticity of demand. I'm going to put here 0 0.5. All right. And now the price of the good increases in this particular case. All right. So what's going to happen in this case? Well, again, we go back to our formula. We can say here, this is equal to, I'm going to erase this for the second of a minute. This is equal to 0.5. All right. So now interpret this for me. What this says is that for every 1%, for example, increase in price, quantity demand is going to fall by half a percent. Right? Implicit in this is a ratio of 0.05 over 1. All right? Again, you're increasing price by, let's say, 10%. Quantity demand is going to fall, in this case, by 5%. So what does that mean for total revenue? Again, let's write down our formula. Total revenue equals P times Q. And now we've gone the opposite. We've increased price. Again, I'll use the example of 10%. And our question is, what happened to quantity demanded? Well, quantity demanded only fell off by less than 10%, in this case, by 5%. So the increase in price was not offset by the decrease in quantity demanded. Therefore, total revenues have to increase. They're greater than zero. All right. So now, A and B are both correct. And so we're headed towards a, a pretty obvious answer in D. But let's just work through part C here. It says the price elasticity of demand is 3.0 and the price of the good decreases. Again, let's go back, change our numbers here. Elasticity of demand is 3.0. In this case, we're going to cut price in this example, part C. Go back to here. Well, how do I get a ratio of 3.0? It's 3.0 to 1. So now if I increase price or decrease price in this case by 10%, quantity demand is going to increase by a very large 30%. All right? Again, the relative increase in quantity demanded is going to be more than the relative decrease in price. Therefore, total revenue is going to increase. And now you've got your answer. The answer is obviously D, all of the above. But it's a really nice test question, right? It forces you to walk through each one of these situations. It forces you to kind of write down the basic information that you need and analyze the problem from there. You don't have to memorize anything except just make sure you understand what this ratio means and you've written this formula down for yourself. You're really going to be in very good shape if you take the problem bit by bit and plug in what you know and analyze it from there. All right, so that's our problem one. We can go on to problem two.